stay away because the fear is still there and the problem is still unresolved. And the problem goes all the way back to the cycle that you inherited from your environment, from your parents, from anyone, your caretakers, whoever took care of you. That's probably who you act like right now. It's probably exactly who you act like. And that could be right. That could be wrong. It just depends. So a vicious woman can pick up on your fear. Let me tell you something. That's the making of a vicious woman that I just told you. But when, when you have a vicious woman in the church or in organizations and business or even with relationships, when you have a vicious woman, this woman really isn't stupid at all. What, that's the woman that everybody says is crazy. That's the woman that acts like sometimes like Medea. Maybe not. You know, it just depends on what type of vicious woman she is because, y'all, there are all types of vicious women. There are the real mad ones that will kill you, and there are also the ones that will slander you. I mean, it's just different types of vicious women. But a vicious woman is not stupid at all. She's, she got behavior problems and a little mental stuff going on, but she's not really stupid because a vicious woman can pick on up on your fears and use it against you to make you go a total di direction from where God is sending you or they can put in your they can put your head on a, a, a platter and expose your fears to everybody else so now everybody else knows what to use against you a vicious woman can knock your self esteem down she'll knock your self worth down um, she'll tell you that you're not good enough until you start believing it. You'll begin to question yourself. Am I good enough? She'll question everything you got on. Oh, um, that's pretty, but I brought that two seasons ago. She'll make you think that you're behind when God is saying that you're on time. In 2019, 2019, you should not let the enemy whisper in your ear. I pray for God to close your ears off to the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, amen. Because that woman will get into your ear gates and before you know it, you will feel defeated. Before you know it, you'll be going back to those self-defeating thoughts that when they do go away, when they do go away, everything is good. But this woman will keep you reminded that you are a failure. She will make you abort assignments that God has given you by planting fear and anxiety over you. Every time you show up somewhere, this woman will cause anxiety in your life. A cycle like that has to be broken. And sometimes it, it takes a little bit of time to do that. Okay, so y'all, let's talk about um um one of the famous women in the Bible, a vicious woman in the Bible was Delilah. Delilah is our first count of a vicious woman in this here in this series. She's our first count of a vicious woman that we are discussing, and, and you know I want to have you to read all of that. As a matter of fact, let me pull it up. I want you to go home and read that and read some of the things and, and see if you can catch on to what her behavior was because she, she <laughs> to be honest, Delilah did not hide who she was. I mean, she didn't really hide it. So I want you to notice her behavior and whatever the patterns she may have had. Okay, so we're talking about, let me see, Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah. I am trying to pull it up here. Oh my God, am I gonna have to? Okay, y'all. Let me let me type it in. Okay, Samson. Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah. Give me just a second, y'all. I had it pulled up, and I don't know what happened to it. But I had it pulled up. I was just reading back over it. 
Okay, so Samson and Delilah, you can go to Judges 16. Okay, so Samson was born a Nazarite, which means separated or set aside for God. This meant he was not to drink wine or fruit of the vine. He couldn't go near or touch a dead body or human, uh, and that was of a human or animal, nor could he cut his hair. Let's go down to Judges 13. Make sure I'm on the right thing. No, I'm not. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah. Go to Judges 13 and 5, y'all. Judges 13 and 5. You got to understand that Delilah was, um, she was one of those women that were just vicious. She didn't have a heart for love at all. Okay, no, y'all, I'm in the wrong area again. You know what? Okay, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read this. Judges 13 and 5 says, You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Delilah was a bad woman. When I tell you, shut your mouth. Delilah came through, and whatever she had on him, (laughs) he got messed up in the process of it because she was vicious. She didn't care. She was on assignment from the devil. She was on assignment from hell, and she actually fulfilled the assignment that the enemy sent her out to do. Okay, so... um. Samson ignored his Nazarite vow of godly devotion and relied upon his own strength and abilities rather than the ability of God to work through him. God empowered him with supernatural strength to begin the the deliverance of the people of Israel from the Philistines. He had a weakness for Philistine women. Delilah was a Philistine woman and he had a weakness for her. And, um, His passion ended up being more important to him than the will of God. His lust ended up being more important to him than the will of God. You know, Samson became spiritually blinded by the broody of Delilah. That's why I'm trying to tell y'all that broody can trip you up. We Sometimes women get jealous of other women. Because of how they look. But you don't know what type of vicious cycle that they are surrounded in. You don't know what type of vicious cycle that they have grew up in. And that cycle is still in them. And can come out at any moment, you know. Okay, so I'm going to read just a little bit of this. You know, Delilah was smooth. She actually, you know, honestly, really she didn't have to trick Samson too much. Because he was in love with her. And listen what I'm saying. Um, go, Y'all, we're going to start at Judges 16. Sam, yeah, 16. One day, Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. You hear that? Vicious woman, prostitute. Mm-mm-mm-mm. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying at dawn, we'll kill him. He was already set up from the floor, y'all. And some of y'all are dealing with some people who are setting you up from the floor because of this vicious cycle, because of this dysfunctional thing in your family. You feel like you got to do this. You got to do that. But what is God saying in your season? I pray for God to open your eyes and give you spiritual sight and sound to what it is that you need to do in this season in order to please God instead of the flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But Samson, we're on verse 3, but Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posters, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. 
Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delala. Mm-mm-mm. Whose name was Delala. The rulers, see, he had a thing for Philistine women, y'all. He did. He had a thing for these Philistines, ladies. So this is where Delilah comes in at, y'all. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength, and how can we overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shackles of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. So you see what I'm saying? She was vicious, but she didn't hide that at all because of her broody. He couldn't see what she was really doing. He was blinded, but she wasn't blinded at all. And Samson answered her. She asked a straight question. The Bible does not say that she was tricking him. It just says that she asked him. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become a weak, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him up with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the both strings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. So you see what a vicious woman does? A vicious woman sets her eyes on something. Listen, this is the behavior pattern of Delilah. She had her eyes set on a prize, which was that money. So then she put into action a plan. She had a plan of action. So check this out. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called to him. Wait a minute. You hear that? She had men hidden in the room. And she called to him. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, all this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. So she's getting a little upset now. She wants to know the real deal. Because by now you realize that Samson is playing games. While he's playing games, the vicious woman is not playing games with him. Sometimes, y'all, you got to wake up and realize that the enemy is not playing games with you. I don't care how brutal you are. The enemy is not playing a game with you. It don't matter how many times you go and get your nails done. If you don't have your mindset on Christ... And have a Christ-centered life. The enemy will play with you. No, the enemy will be serious with you. And you'll be sitting up there still playing. And not realizing that this cycle is about to take you out. Amen. Okay, so the next thing is. He replied, if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom. And tighten it up with the pen. I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping. Ain't that something how the enemy is still up working while you're sleeping? While you're still trying to figure it out in your mind's sleep. The enemy is up making your situation worse. Making your circumstances worse. The enemy could be using your family members to make your situation worse for when you get ready to go to work or get them kids ready to go to school or you get ready to go to church. The enemy is up all time of night plotting on you. You better have a prayer life. Amen. A prayer life. Delilah took, so while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric and tightened it with the pen. 
Again, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He had 